Today we're talking about DNA, explicitly radiation damage from DNA. So what happens when x-rays interact with DNA? I'm Brian from How Radiology Works. This is Luca from How Radiology Works. And if you're interested in radiology content, like bite-sized content about how radiology works, click below on subscribe and then click on that little bell icon so you can notify when we release new content. So coming up, how do x-rays interact with DNA. So the first thing we want to talk about is actually DNA doesn't take up that much of the volume in your body. It's much less than 1% of your whole body. Because if you think about it, you have the cells and then within the cells you have the nucleus. Within the nucleus you have a small fraction being the DNA. So with respect to that, as x-rays are coming through, most of the time x-rays are going to be passing through and most of the volume in your body is actually not DNA. So most of the interactions that are happening with x-rays in your body are not with the DNA. This is going to be our little model for an x-ray. This is a plastic knife that's <laughs> coming through here, but most of the time it's actually going to be the case that the x-rays are not going to interact directly with DNA. The x-rays themselves actually will interact with matter via photoelectric and Compton primarily in the diagnostic range. So the x-ray is going to come in and the x-ray is going to locally generate electrons. So the way we're going to illustrate that is with marshmallows. So the x-ray comes in and it's going to locally generate electrons. What? So we can think of this as the little electron cloud that travels along with the x-rays. As their x-rays are coming in, they can interact and generate electrons. So now what we've simulated is the x-ray coming in and then this is the path of electrons that are going to be depositing their energy relatively locally but right around the x-ray path. And so again, an x-ray, individual x-ray will come in and interact but if you think about many x-rays coming in, they could generate this type of uh, interaction. So it's actually those electrons that are going to be doing the damage to the DNA. So again, now we say electrons are going to be doing damage to DNA, and there's a couple types of ways that that can happen. The electron can either hit the DNA directly. So if the electron hits that DNA directly, and knocks out what we call a base pair. So remember adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Those are our base pairs in DNA. These are rather sticky. <laughs> so I'm indicating here that this electron knocked out a base pair from the DNA. That's called direct interaction or direct damage. So that electron directly knocked out the base pair from the DNA. So that's one option. The other option is that we have what's called indirect action, wherein the electron interacts with the molecules around it and creates what's called free radicals. Those free radicals could then also knock out a base pair here and if the free radical knocks out the base pair that's what's called indirect interaction so indirect is actually more frequent than direct but those are both possible ways that the dna can be damaged the other concept we want to talk about is single versus multi-strand breaks so again if we knock out a single base pair so this electron came and knocked out a single base pair. Then when that DNA goes to replicate, you can actually look at the base pair, which is on the other side of this double helix. And when it's doing the replication, it can just fill in the correct base pair. So single strand breaks are actually much less damaging in the long run because they can be corrected relatively easily during DNA reproduction. 
We'll now talk about double strand brakes. Luca got a little bit bored, so he went uh, to find his brother. And a double strand brake is again, if those electrons or free radicals come in and they interact and they knock off both sides, both base pairs, and now when the DNA goes to replicate, the DNA can no longer have a template to know what should happen in order to do the replication. So errors can occur when the DNA replication is happening and those errors can lead to long-term negative side effects. That's why double strand brakes are much more damaging, much more severe than single strand brakes. So that's the basics of how radiology works in terms of how X-rays generate electrons via Compton and photoelectric effect. Those electrons then either directly interact with DNA or indirectly generate free radicals. Free radicals cause base pair damage and double strand breaks are much worse than single strand breaks. If you're wondering, I keep talking about photoelectric and Compton generating those electrons. If you haven't seen our video on that, check that one out coming up next. Why can I not have them like that? <laughs> you can have a marshmallow in a little bit, just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That looks like a marshmallow Christmas tree. Alright, look at the camera. <laughs>